Welcome to the online lesson, Segment Lengths and Circles. This is section 10.5 from the Geometry Book. <clears throat> As we go through a couple of things to note, I'm going to be giving you some pauses. And when I do that, it'll probably be on the theorem slides. Go ahead and just pause the tape while you take down the notes. Um, write down the theorems. Just take notes as you normally would in class. You know, write down the examples. You can pause this video if you want to see if you can do the examples on your own. I'll remind you of that as we go through. I'll give you an idea, a heads up of kind of what's, what's coming up next so that you know if you need to pause, if you know if you need to break. And if it ever says pause or if you ever need to rewind anything, feel free to do it. That's the beauty of this. The whole lesson is in your hands right now. So you're going at your speed, doing the things that you need to do to be able to learn this material. So we're, we're, we're giving you the opportunity to learn this at your own pace. So segment lengths and circles, here we go. Coming up, we're leading off with a theorem. Theorem 10.15, if two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the product of the lengths of the segment of one chord are equal to the product of the lengths of the segments of the other chord. Okay, so if you need to write that down right now, go ahead and pause this video, write that down, and coming up right after the pause, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what this means in terms of this diagram here at the bottom. Okay, so we're back from the pause. And what this looks like is we have two chords here. So CD and AB are chords. They are divided into segments because they cut each other. They intersect. <clears throat> and so what this theorem is telling us is that EA times EB is equal to EC times ED. Okay, so we set up this multiplication problem saying the piece times the piece is equal to the piece times the piece. That's the essence of that theorem. Okay, so if you need to, once again, go ahead and pause, write this one down. Moving on. We're going to use this example to enforce, reinforce that theorem. And so go ahead and pause it right here if you want to write down this example. I'm going to go ahead and go through it right now. We also, we see that we have this situation. So it says chords ST and PQ intersect inside the circle, as you can see by the diagram. So we're going to find the value of X. Well, seeing that X is right here, and we know that's a piece of one of the segments, we can set up our relationship because we know that SR times RT is equal to QR times RP. And so if we substitute in values, we end up with 3 times 6 is equal to 9 times x. So 18 is equal to 9x. So I'm going to divide by 9, divide by 9, so I get 2 is equal to x. Okay? Pretty straightforward on that one. The next one coming up is going to be an example for you to do. So when I switch the slide, if you want to go ahead and pause it, go ahead. So if you need to pause right now, I'm going to do this example right after the short break. So go ahead and hit pause if you'd like to do this one on your own. All right, so you might be back from the break, and this is how we're going to set this up. We have a missing letter here in the middle, and so we don't necessarily need to write out the whole thing, but we know that 18 times x is going to be equal to 12 times 9. Because remember, these pieces, when you multiply the pieces together, they should equal one another. So 18x is equal to 12 times 9. And so if we divide by 18, divide by 18, x is going to be equal to 6. Okay, This is actually equal to 108. And so when we divide by 18, we get 6. Okay, So the pieces multiplied together are equal. Now, a couple of vocabulary words. Really great opportunity to pause the, pause the tape here, pause the video, and go ahead and write these three things down. But the tangent segment is a segment that's tangent to the circle at its end point. So as you can see, PS is that segment. A secant segment is a segment that intersects a line 
at two points. Okay, so PR is a secant segment. It should actually be a circle, I think. I'm going to fire my editor. An external segment is the part outside the circle. So PQ would be this part of the segment that's outside the circle. Once again, these are all segments. They don't keep going. They're not a line that keeps going on. That's why they don't have the arrowheads. And so we've got these three vocabulary words here. Go ahead and pause it if you need to at this point. All right, moving right along. Theorem 1016. Theorem 1016 says, if two secant segments share the same external endpoint, then the product of one external segment and its secant segment equals the product of the other external segment and its secant segment. So what we have here is we have these two secant segments, EB. So I'm going to write those down, secant segments. Secant segments would be EB and ED. And when we have these secant segments, what we're saying is the outside piece, the external segment, times the whole thing is equal to the outside segment of the other one times the whole thing. So here's what this looks like. EA times EB is equal to, I'll change colors here when we go into the white, EC times ED. Okay, so if you need to write this down, I would suggest you draw the, the figure, write down what we've, got, what we've got here in terms of the terminology for the secant segment and the letters for each piece of the segment. Okay, we're going on to another theorem now. So if you need to pause and write this one down, go ahead and pause and write this down. Next theorem, 10.17. If a secant segment and a tangent segment share an external endpoint, then the product of the external segment and the secant segment equals the tangent segment squared. So in this case, with this tangent segment, EA, it doesn't have two pieces. It doesn't touch the circle at two points, so it's not cut in half or cut into pieces. And so EA squared is going to equal EC times ED. Okay, so EA is the only part of that segment. So there's not two parts to multiply together. There's only one part. So you're going to multiply it by itself. Okay, so go ahead and pause if you need to write this one down. I would suggest that you draw the figure, write down the letters so that you have a visual of what this, these words actually mean. Okay, moving right along. So now we're going to find the value of x. We basically have three theorems here that we're dealing with. We need to figure out which one does this example look like. Well, we obviously have two segments or two secants, it's two secant segments. And so when we're setting this up, I'm going to go ahead and write it out. RP times RQ is equal to RS times RT. Now be careful. You're not taking the two pieces and multiplying them together. You're multiplying one piece times the whole thing. Okay? So when we look at this example, we've got 9. I'm going to change colors. 9 times RQ, careful, which is 20, is equal to 10, careful, times 10 plus X. Little distributive property working for us here. Okay, so we've got 9 times 20, which gives us 180, is equal to and I'll go ahead and draw in my distributive property arrows here, okay, is equal to 100 plus 10x. I am going to subtract 100 from each side. If at any point I'm going too quickly for you, just pause it. That's the beauty of it. You don't have to interrupt me. I don't have to interrupt you. Go ahead and just pause it if you need to. Okay, so we've got 80 is equal to 10x over 10, over 10, so x is equal to 8. And then I go back and I make sure, what, what were the instructions asking me? Were they asking me to find a segment length? No, nope, they were asking me to find the value of x. 
so I am done. All right, so there's an example for you. Be sure you remember this example for tomorrow. Now, moving right along. Find the value of x and y. Now we have two separate things. And some of you are going, I have no idea what's going on. There's so many things. It's two separate problems. Notice we have two secant segments. Okay? We have a secant segment here. We have a secant segment here. It involves x. So let's do that one very first. Now, so that's going to give us 25 times 45. Because remember, I wrote 44. 45. 25, the external part, times the whole thing. So 25 times 45 is equal to 24 times 24 plus x. Okay? So we have 1125 is equal to 576 plus 24x. Go ahead and subtract 576 from both sides. That goes away. 24x left on this side. Now we have 549 is equal to 24x. We're going to divide by 24. We're going to divide by 24. Twenty-two point eight seven five. Okay. Now. The inside part. This is also 22 and 7 eighths. For those of you who love fractions out there as much as I do. Okay? So we've got this much. That's x. But remember, we are finding the value of x and y. So y, we have two tangents. I'm sorry. Two chords inside the circle. And so we recall we have that other theorem that says that we've got 8 times 14 is equal to y times 16. Okay? So we've got 112 is equal to 16y. We divide by 16. y equals 7. The beauty of this, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back, rewind through the video, look through your notes, slow it down, go step by step. Rewatch the example. It's a beautiful thing. Okay? Next example. Example four. Here's one that's got something we haven't seen yet, but we have an external segment. So we know that AB squared is equal to BC times BD. Okay? So AB squared, 5 squared is equal to x times x plus 4. Okay? 25 is equal to x squared plus 4x. I sense a quadratic formula coming on. In order to use a quadratic formula, as we have done at times during this year, we need to set it equal to 0. So let's look at what we've got. We're going to subtract 25 because we need to set this equal to 0. So 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 25. It's a beautiful thing because if you remember the quadratic formula, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Love the undo button. All over 2a. Where do I get this a, b, and c? You are asking yourself. a is the coefficient in front of x, which is 1. b is right here. c is right here. So we fill in the blanks. x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 16 minus 4 times 1 times negative 25 all over 2a which is just 2. I'm going to track this up here as we go through the rest of this problem. Once again, if I'm going too fast, you go ahead and just slow me down. Pause it up. Review. Check it out. Negative 4 
plus or minus the square root. Now, in here it gets a little dicey. 16 minus 100. Okay? Because if we've got if we've got plus plus this in here we've got something like this because those negatives are going to go away okay so now we've got 16 minus 100 well if I subtract 16 minus 100 I get oh, I've got to flip this over too all over to a negative 84 but this is plus so this is 116 so I've got negative 4 plus or minus 116 over 2 now with this 116 I can take out a factor of 4 so I'm going to end up with negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 29 times 2 over 2 all right so I've got negative 2 I'm running out of space I'm gonna go up here because when I divide both of these factors by negative by 2 I get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 29 well if I subtract it I get a negative number if I add it I get a positive number and so I end up with approximately 3.39 when I add it. Okay? We will talk about this more in class tomorrow. Here's one, the next problem that you can do on your own. I'm not going to show you how to do this one. I want you to attack it on your own, and we will talk about it tomorrow in class. So here it is. Go ahead and pause it up and write it down. And I'll see you in class tomorrow. Good luck and try your best.